Welcome to the June 7th, 2022 meeting for the FPGA team at Open Research Institute. It's a stand-up meeting. And what we do is we talk about what we've done over the past week and what we are doing over the next week. And if we need any resources, and if we have any roadblocks. And so first off, what I'll do is I'll turn it over to you, Paul, so you can tell us about um, any recent remote lab work and maybe talk about the potential for the uplink simulator and uplink um, work to eventually move to uh, FPGA. Okay, I'm Paul KB5MU for anybody who hasn't already seen my face on these videos. Um, nothing to report from the remote lab, everything seems to be working. Haven't had a, any major events there. We've been working on this uh, notion of an uplink simulator, which generates multiple channels of, uh, of our narrowband uplinks, our FDMA uplinks, and with a certain amount of versatility so that we can test a multi-channel receiver. I think I reported on that last week. We reached a certain point where we were able to do that with the M17 modulation and then said, okay, that's far enough with M17. And uh, I've been working with Michelle to understand what's necessary to switch this over to a higher data rate link, which will be something new uh, that we've sketched out that have not ever uh, specced out in, in great detail. So we're going to do that at least uh, on some temporary basis, make some uh, quick and possibly dirty assumptions and, and just go forward and get some kind of higher speed down uplink coded. Uh, I'll mean coding both a transmitter and a receiver for it in order to uh, to do testing. And we're using as a basis the C++ implementation that M17 provided. Uh, at least that's the current path. We've gone through that implementation in some detail together and understand how it's put together, we think. And we're going to start taking it apart and putting it back together with a higher data rate. So you start out with 16 kilobit opus as our high quality voice codec and hopefully design it in such a way that the data rates can be moved around dynamically and won't require a, a revamp of the code every single time that's sort of a stretch goal here just we really just want to get it out at 16 kilobits and that will take some additional work because everything's hard coded to particular numerology for m17 so um, that's the the process that we're we're going through now and uh, there will be more work ahead before that has anything very much demonstrable. Uh, that's where it's at. And hopefully it'll be somewhere uh, a little further along next week. Cool. OK, thank you. Yeah, I'm hoping that um, in between this set of work for the uplink, um, and there is an existing implementation for for M17, this exact same body of work from the same author uh, on PYNQ, uh, P -Y -N -Q, the, um, which is a zinc processor. So we, we have a fork of that in the repo. So between those two things, I think that we can get a, a, a receiver on the, on the payload or on the, what we call the spacecraft um, on the ZC706 um, that we can use all of this to, to create a a receiver and then in between receiving the uplink and transmitting the downlink with the existing encoder there's a lot of work there too um, a straightforward multiplexing is probably where to start um, but we're already talking about quality of service and things like that in the in the documents and in the on the uh, list and and on slack so that's that's where it's going and uh that's where it's or that's where it's been. That's what the current uh, work is up to now. And, and then the, the plans that we're talking about are where it's going. So thank you very much. This is uh, pretty exciting stuff. Cool. See OK. Another. Hey, James, uh, you have the floor. Thank you, Michelle. Uh, not too much to report from Remote Lab South here. We had a few storms, but nothing major in the way. We're looking on doing a bit of upgrades in regards to our basic infrastructure with the systems we currently have, mostly in the way of we've got a new uh, APC that we're going to have Chubb go into, so there's going to be some downtime in the near future when we do that. And uh, in regards to actually getting the more proper lab set up, we're getting more cleaned up in the barn and getting things ready more over there, getting some cleaning done. 
but other than that, nothing too major to port and no major roadblocks or resources we really need. Oh, wow. Okay. Well, that's a, a good, really good progress. And, and thank you. Let us know if there's anything that you need and uh, if any funding is required. We definitely shall. Thank you. Okay, cool. All right. Now, Anshul, he's, he's not able to join today, um, but he's been um, very helpful in a particular aspect. So what we've been doing is for the ZC706, which is a 7000 series zinc based board, uh, which has an ADRV 9371 uh, RFIC from uh, analog devices that we're using for, for designing all this stuff. And what we've struggled with is integrating the encoder, uh, DVBS2 encoder that we have and getting it tested over the air or demonstrated over the air. And yes, um, the encoder works and performs well on bit matched from, from GNU radio and such, uh, but but ma mastering the being able to control it, very, you know, uh, competently and well uh, from the FPGA has has been really hard. And so what we've been focusing on is just getting this working and and more people learning how to do it. And so Anshul has a number of steps. Um, the mistake that I was making in trying to get this working here in Remote Labs West was just approaching it from a strictly HDL uh, point of view and taking the code base and trying to, to use the um, integration with the analog devices reference design. And then thinking that I could just write up some sort of small uh, processor side application uh, in Vitus or, or as the SDK from, from Vivado. And it looks like, no, need to actually go back further and do this all as a Petalinux creation. And so this brings up something that we've struggled with in the past is, well, you know, the assumption from, from the tools designers from, from Xilinx specifically is that they kind of assume that you have access to a board and that you can just program up an SD card and then put it, pop it in. So for when you're doing this all remote, it's, it'd be better if you could just handle it all remote. So it looks like the, what we'll have to do is make an SD card and put it in there and boot from the SD card. And that's fine. So we'll, we'll proceed with Anshul's advice. We are still waiting on the, the Pluto, which is a, a parallel uh, path with the same encoder, still waiting for uh, Everest to publish his processor side software uh, achievement. So the again, the, the HDL side, the programmable logic side seems to be working and is that's very exciting. Um, and then catching us up on the, the processor side is really the key. And then figuring out like how to, what functions need to be implemented next. So what we're talking about doing is, is before the encoder really comes the scheduler and, and that's the place that we'll have decisions on who to queue up first. Uh, it, and we, we think that the metric is latency. So low latency applications through this particular communication system should get priority. And then the open question is, if you request more bandwidth, how does that interact with the low latency request? So th th there is a lot of work done here in the literature and there's some, some good best practices and we will get a chance to uh, try all those out. Uh, so if you're listening to this and you're interested in, in all of this, then please uh, join the list and welcome aboard and give us your opinions. Okay, I think that's that's mainly what Anshul had to say, and we will be talking about this on Slack and the the conversation about the the uplink uh, voice and data protocol will continue, and we should have updates in the repo uh, later on today. All right, any other comments or questions before we close? All right. Thanks, everybody. All right, see you on Slack and on the list. And next week, same FPGA time, same FPGA channel for another round of, of reports and transparency for the community. All right, see you soon. Thank you.